Hello and welcome to Glide by Prep E, where we help you make wiser study abroad decisions. So when you have gap in your education that you might have finished your um, bachelor's or a master's, if say five years back, seven years back, ten years back, getting a study visa is always a challenge. And especially when the gap is like ten years or more, then it is just considered impossible. But let's just try to understand something with common sense. See. if you have gap that is not a crime right if you know if now if you want to educate yourself that is not a crime and this is something that the visa officers clearly understand the whole point is conveying your message correctly conveying your message properly so that the visa officer is convinced that what your level of establishment is today are you justifying your investment into education compared to that level of establishment so let's say that if your level of establishment is all already this and now you're doing a course which lies here can you justify that or uh, if you're naturally able to show the progression in your studies then eventually it is not a problem so this is a video interview of one of our clients whose name is prajwal and prajwal applied for his canadian study visa for the january 2021 intake and a very funny thing he got his visa in march because the visas were delayed he started his classes online he said that i'm going to risk it it's okay and it was just a few days left before uh, finally the last de- deadline of the college fee refund was there but eventually the good news came we were also quite hopeful and i hope that all of you who have gap will get some valuable inputs from this interview listen to him listen to the uh, strategies that we adapted to while we were filing his visa while we were choosing his course while we while we were preparing his sop and i will also share some of my inputs uh, from the experience of handling hundreds of files in the last one year itself so all the best and i hope that you will like this video so hi hello everyone so my name is prajwal nayak and uh, i have around like 10 years of work experience so i completed my graduation in 2010 so i graduated as a bachelor of engineering okay and uh, after that i had around 10 years of experience working with various reputed companies and with uh, different clients and i applied for uh, itba course which is information technology business analysis course uh, in connect uh, store college and uh, uh, like in ielts i got around average 7 band uh, and uh, 6.5 in uh, speaking and writing and uh, Eight and seven point five, and overall I got seven average in IELTS. All right. Okay. Great. So, uh, which engineering have you done? Was it ECE or is it computer science? Yeah, it was electronics and telecommunication. Electronics and yeah, and telecommunication. Yeah. So my first placement was in telecom, and then I switched to the in IT software domain. So I worked as an automation analyst. uh where in i worked in various technical uh coding like java c sharp web script mm-hmm. and then i thought of like uh, since i already uh, working into technical aspects so i wanted a blend of technical plus managerial skills mm-hmm. so that's why i opted for uh, this business analysis course in connect to analysis some what happens to be are uh, technical some what happens to be managerial so that is something right, right. and it happens to be a two years course so we get your three years work permit everything is sorted right. so one tip for all the aspirants who are uh, planning for their study abroad after five or 10 years of education gap this is one thing that i have seen in a lot of profiles if you have a decent ielts score so for example in this case prajwal has a score of uh, overall 7 which is not bad which is good and he had like 8 in one of the modules if you have a good ielts score we are seeing positive results and the uh, second most important thing here is that he had a degree in electronics and telecommunication but his work experience was in it right IT. and then we applied for a course in it so if let's say you have a gap of 5 years 6 years whatever it may be always try to relate the education that now you're trying to do in canada with your work experience not your previous degree so like many a time students come that i have done engineering then i am you know since 5 years into let's say finance or banking but now i want to get back to it i would say that would be a risk you are risking your profile right. because the visa officer always believes that why at this point of time all of a sudden you know uh change your you know course of career or whatever you want yeah. 
Right. Okay. So, Prajwal, uh, now a couple of things because I believe that a lot of your friends would also have been applying, and you know, you must have talked to a lot of people. You must have known a lot of people. What do you think was the difference? That okay, because at your at the profile that we are talking, the profile that you have, there's a good sixty seventy percent chance of rejection, right? So, what do you think was different in your case? Why do you think that it got accepted? If you feel that it's not that you want to. So Anit, I will tell you. Uh, at the start, uh, I was a bit dicey about my profile, uh, considering that I had ten years of education gap. Okay. Yeah. So I approached two, three consultancy. So they told me straightforward. See, you have a ten years of education gap, so we can't guarantee you that your profile will get approved. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I did some R and J, did some research online. Then I came across your uh, prep uh, YouTube channel, and I that's how I contacted you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. And then uh, you, uh, I remember I just went through one video, Murari's video, in which you told IS general is uh, valid for SGS category. Yeah. So that's how I contacted you because uh, that time I was planning for PR. It uh, didn't uh, turn into because of the uh, CRS cause was uh, going uh, very high, so I was not able to get that score. Then I just you know. Uh, was trying for study permit, but then I just contacted you. And the main important thing I would want to tell the people who have you know uh, education gap of more than five to six years. So the main important thing is SOP. Uh, your SOP should be very strong. Uh, the main important thing is why you want to choose that course, why you are choosing that course, and uh, why that particular college. So it is very important, and you should mention that in SOP. That is where uh, and. And whatever course you are selecting, uh, it should be relevant. Relevant in sense, uh, it should you know whatever you have done in the past, that should be relevant with your future course. It's not like if you are studying in arts and you are directly going into big data or cloud computing course. Yeah. So visa officer will have a iota of doubt on that. Another another thing here is that it should not only be relevant. Now let's say if you have five years or six years of gap, it should not only be relevant. Obviously, it has to be relevant, but more than that, you should show career progression. So let's right. say that if you are in computer programming from the past ten years and now you are doing a course in computer programming. well the chances are of a refusal you might think that okay i am a computer programmer i am doing a course in computer programming that it, it is going to work out then what you are showing the visa officer is that i am just choosing a course for the sake of it because whatever knowledge you are going to get in that course is redundant you already know these things right the visa officer is quite aware that whatever you have learned in 10 years is way more than what you are going to learn in that one year course so always try to choose a course in which you can prove some career progression and what happens after 5 years 7 years 8 years of um you know education gap i think this is something that i have started saying that like let's say if you are applying after 5 8 10 years of education gap you have to consider the visa officer as your father in law that you are convincing your father in law that i am going for higher education <laughs> Now he would be asking you like, what will happen, son? That this time, when you are going to leave, you are going to be well established. That you are well established here. Everything is coming here. You are 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 coming here. So let's say in the SOP, I would write that my name is Prajwal, and you know, in like why this course at this point of time that right now, let's say I am getting one lakh a month. Let's just you know, uh, presume and say a uh, random number. After completing this course, according to the statistics that I see on the web, my salary would increase to one point five lakh a month. Don't say that it would go from one lakh to ten lakh. And the visa officer is not a fool. Let's be realistic. That it would go from one to one point five lakh a month. So I am getting a good raise of fifty percent by investing into education. so that is why i have this motivation that yes at this point of time when i am in the middle of my career and you know perhaps a few years away from a mid life crisis i want to do this course so these are some of the points now everyone says that i want to come back to india and serve my country that's that's like a copy paste sentence in every sop right so like we we all write that that you know i i want to take care of my family i love my family who doesn't love their family right everyone loves their family the visa officer is aware and he is sick tired of reading this again and again give them concrete facts that's the most important thing be as specific as possible 
related to your case and as prajwal knows keep your sop in paragraph form so for example if you remember prajwal the sop that we you know prepared had paragraphs that why this course why this college why not india why uh, you know particularly this city and like we we basically used to give a, a, a faq like we used to give the sop in form of an faq that if the visa officer has any doubt ye le bhai sop jo doubt hai dekh le clear kar le right so that is how you have to do it do not write a love letter your sop should not be like a single paragraph a long paragraph no one is going to read it they have like a few minutes to process their application so they are definitely not going to uh read it right so prajal how is the experience with canadian education i know one thing is getting the visa and you know starting your course and all those things and getting your pr that's right but after 10 years when you go back to structured learning and structured structured education it becomes difficult because you have responsibilities on your head you are uh, perhaps you know you might be continuing your job when you are attending online classes you have family you, I, you have a kid as well right so all these things become you know really uh, difficult to manage so how do you feel after coming back to school after 10 years yeah so basically uh, i am not into that uh, uh, academy uh, you want over into academic course from last 10 years so basically yeah it is bit difficult to again uh, go into that uh, academic life but yeah uh, considering the syllabus in canada it's not uh, theoretical as we have in india so here we have a lot of engaging things like group assignments presentations case studies mm-hmm. so where you have a lot of uh, you know uh, practical things to do rather than theoretical just have to find the things and you just is uh, take out in exam it's not like that in here so in my first semester i think the first semester was relatively easy but yeah it was bit engaging more engaging kind of because there are a lot of case studies assignments group studies group presentations right so it's not focused on uh, you know just preparing for group mid term direct mark ke pass ko that every day there is an assignment right. I yeah, like really the fact because when we were studying for um, RCIC, so that is the regulated Canadian immigration consultant exam, we used to have two assignments every day. So managing the business, doing those two assignments every day, it was really, really very difficult. So yeah, right. it, it, it's a different uh, thing altogether. Great. So, uh, Prashant, do you have any other classmates of your age, or you are the most senior one? <laughs> no, no. So uh, we, I have already two of my mates okay. who are you know cross thirty, or already cross thirty, and I have like nine to ten years old. All right, all right, all right. So that's that's actually great. So awesome. So Prajul, any any you know remarks, any testimonial that you want to leave for us before we you know. Yeah. Your- so yeah, the first thing I would like to say thank you to Hari team basically because I know the days when I used to panic and I used to call you. Yeah, it already I, I, it's more than two to three months I'm not getting the visas and uh, the way you consoled me, the positive vibes you gave. Yeah, don't worry, you will get, you will get. that helped me a lot frankly speaking thank you so much for that to uh, having that personal touch i would say and secondly from sop point of view that is a very important document as you explained so the way you told like you first write your sop on your own give your personal touch and then we will modify if we think that there is something to change that's the way you did that i i am prep you post for the sop format i like that process right so basically you know there are some sop writers and people available but i don't recommend uh, them honestly the very simple like no offense to anyone but the very simple reason behind that is that they uh, you know use those cliche techniques they use those cliche right, uh, right. stuff and the visa officer can identify that in a second trust me because if you, if you, if you you know simply look at it there are close to half a million applications and there are perhaps handful of thousand visa officers so there's a very good chance that you know the person who has written an sop and then there's another person who has written the same sop the same visa officer is looking at it so we can easily identify that okay this is you know not um, or not something that has been done by the student they don't have a problem with that but you will not be able to explain as strongly as you can do right, right. that's the whole point your emotions should come right it's important here yeah. they need to give a very strong reason because to be honest at uh, you know once you have education gap 
a visa officer is not convinced that why you are doing why you are even going for education they very well know that it is a technique or it is a way forward to get crs point let's be honest but they very well know and it is not the case that it is hidden from them they they work in the same building like let us see pc ottawa the central processing center in ottawa like the, all the people who are processing crs people who are studying the work all are sitting together right they know what is happening but they are looking for a strong reason if you can give it in the sop even if you have 15 years of gap 10 years of gap i won't say 20 at 20 the different i would say go for an mb or something in that case but if you have 10 years 15 years of gap you have a chance that's the most important thing and in any case so uh, thanks a lot prajwal for sparing your time and i know your midterms are done now i so the first semester is done now first semester is done yeah i hope that the advice over the course is also good that you are you know uh, happy with the choice of the course and i would really wish you all the best in the times to come that you are able to perform well and do well in the yeah thank you thank you thank you a lot prajwal thank you so much yeah, yeah.